Hey everybody, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Just wanted to give you a quick update on the tube preamp pedal build. I had a major setback. I tested the preamp this morning, and the good news is everything worked. Everything worked as it, as it should have. The problem was that it was extremely noisy. And even on the rhythm channel, there was so much noise that it was just unusable. You may remember in a previous video I mentioned that I hoped there wouldn't be any problem with the turrets being mounted so low and so close to the filament winding. Well, I should have stopped there. I should have taken it all apart at that point and redone it. But I was hoping for the best, and so I moved forward. And now I'm left with no other choice but to tear everything apart and do it the way that I should have done it in the first place. Not only was I getting a lot of interference from the filament wires, I was also getting what I'm guessing was some parasitic oscillation, uh, just based on the way that the, the low frequencies sounded. Um, everything was, was pretty mushy and um, just it didn't sound the way it was supposed to sound, even aside from the noise. I didn't measure properly when I was designing the layout at home. So the pins on the tube sockets were much further away from the point that they would be soldered to than what I had designed for. And so I had a lot of wires going across and, and uh, it, basically it was just poor wiring. And that was another thing I, I should have just stopped and gone home and redesigned the layout and then proceeded. There was nothing I could do to fix it. The only way to fix this is to go back and redo the whole thing. Now, I'm not going to have to redo things like uh, the, the power supply will stay in there, the input board will stay in there, the switching board will stay in there, and all the LEDs and switches and stuff like that. But the whole preamp has to come out. And I'm actually in the process of doing that right now. I've taken quite a bit of it out of there already. While I'm at it, I'm going to end up using a different style of terminal strips instead mostly because I've just never liked working with turrets. Um, these are a lot easier to work with. And um, because of the way that these mount, uh, it will give me the ability to mount these a little bit higher and further away from the tube sockets. I'm also going to have to take the base plate out, which means drilling out the rivets that are holding the tube sockets in place so that I can take that base plate off. And I'm going to use some longer screws to mount these. So this is going to be quite a bit further away from the tube sockets than the turret strips were. Now, in addition to those changes, I'm also going to be using this. Uh, this is 20 gauge, uh, two conductor shielded cable. I'm going to be using this to wire the tube filaments. I'll probably end up using the same stuff for the high voltage supply as well. It may be unnecessary, but at this point, I don't want to take any chances. It's such a tight space in here that I just, uh, I don't have the room to space things as far apart as I normally would in a guitar amplifier. So um, I just, uh, I don't want to have to rebuild this again. So to be on the safe side, I'm just using this shielded cable. And um, that way I can eliminate any possibility of interference from the filament winding or the high voltage lines. So unfortunately that means that we're not going to have a build video this week. I'm going to have to spend all the time that I would have spent building on fixing my mistakes here. But for now, I can show you the solution that I came up with uh, for replacing those turret strips. Now, these are the terminal strips that I had ordered for this build, and I had originally intended to use these, but the problem with these is that on both ends, uh, first of all, this is the longest one that I could find. They may make longer ones than this, but I, I couldn't find them anywhere. And the problem with these is that you have to eat both ends of these terminal strips have to be bolted onto the chassis, which means they're grounded. And you can't even use them as a ground, otherwise you create a whole bunch of ground loops and then you get noise that way. So if I had just bolted these onto our base plate and then not used the end terminals, then I wouldn't have had enough terminals to do the build. Also, when you put two of these side by side, you end up needing two screws side by side, and that would have made it very difficult to, uh, to form that relief in the base plate, especially since it's right next to a tube socket. Um, I could have designed around that, but uh, either way, it would have been really difficult to do that. So I had considered finding a way to attach these together in the center, 
And I thought, you know what, that's just going to be too much trouble. It would be very difficult to do that without having a lot of flexibility there. So I decided against that and went with the turret strips that I had left over from an old project. But it turns out this is exactly what I'm going to end up doing anyway. And it was very difficult. I destroyed quite a few terminal strips figuring out how to do this and, and, and actually make it work. And in the end, what I ended up doing was I, I took a piece of those turret strips and cut it off. And, you know, it had the same spacing as these terminals, uh, fortunately. So I actually riveted these onto the, uh, the holes that are going through the front of these terminals. But that was no easy task, because first I had to drill out these holes just to fit the smallest rivets that I had. And, of course, you can't just drill them out because then they heat up and they spin around and you melt the plastic. So I had to come up with creative ways of holding them still while I drilled and keeping them from overheating and melting the plastic. And then there's these little tangs that hold these onto the back of the plastic strip. Um, and they have, you know, they stick out just enough that uh, it was becoming a problem. So I actually had to countersink these strips, the turret board strips. I had to countersink these. The, the red ones, um, so that it would clear those and not have a gap. And then the rivets themselves weren't long enough, so I had to actually countersink the other side so that the rivets would have something to grab onto, because once they start to spread out, um, you know, the, you have to allow enough space for them to spread out. So it took me several attempts before I actually came up with something that worked. But now that I do, it's actually it's it's pretty stiff. I mean, it's going to be stiffer, at least vertically, than the turret strips were. Because of the way that these mounting tabs are, the terminals are actually offset from where they're mounted, which creates another challenge. For this build, that ends up actually being a good thing, because if these were centered over the screw like the turret strips were, I would never be able to get the speaker emulator board in the back there once we're done. But because they are offset, I can flip it around and it'll give me just, you know, an extra quarter inch or so of clearance, which is all I'm going to need to get that, uh, to get that speaker emulator in there. You know, I've been working on the, the layout for that at home and I, I can't make it any smaller than it is right now. Um, so the, I, I always knew that was going to be a tight fit. It's going to be a really tight fit. And the fact that I'm able to, to flip this around and use the offset to my advantage is the only reason that we're going to be able to have a speaker emulator in this thing. So I would have to build it into a separate box outside of the preamp and I really didn't want to have to do that. So the bottom line is right now I'm really frustrated. Um, I've spent a ton of time working on this and now I have to go back and redo a whole bunch of this. But in the end I'm going to end up with better results than I would have gotten otherwise. So I guess I could say that it's a good thing that I had this problem. It doesn't feel that way right now, um, but I don't want to finish a project just to finish it. I want to have, I, I want it to be done right. It means it's going to take longer. A year from now, when I've been able to use this thing on stage a number of times, I'm not going to care anymore how much time it took me to build it. So that's all I'm going to have for you this week, just a quick update. Next week we'll get back to the build and hopefully with much better results. So we'll see you then.